Good morning and welcome to this next lecture on uh, vibrations of plates and shells. So, we are looking at forced response within that we are looking at steady state harmonic response where the effects of initial conditions have decayed away okay, and the steady forced response remains. Okay. So, now let us look at the response to a few forcings. Now, the first first of all let me set my geometry straight so that we will look at several examples here. So, so let us say this is my x that is my y and that is my z ok. In terms of our original systems it is alpha 1, alpha 2 and alpha 3 ok we should not forget ok. And then I will write the equation of motion in the way normally you will see it plus 2 del 4 w by del x square del y square plus del 4 w by del y 4 plus rho h w double dot is equal to the force ok. Now, let us look at d, d is what e h cube by 12 into 1 minus mu square. So, in terms of mass, length and time the fundamental units e is what Newton per length squared and Newton is what mass into acceleration and further mass length squared L squared ok and this cubic in length say L cube. So, this is what m L square by T square. Okay. All right. Newton mass into acceleration m into L by T square and length squared and H cube length cube. So, for yeah m L square by T square ok that is that is my D further what I have this term over here this is single w length single length over length 4 length 4 ok. So, that is equal to m uh, l cube by t square l 4 it is m by l t square. Okay. So, if I write it in terms of a force again my force is what m mass into acceleration okay, ml by t square and this has l in the denominator. So, into 1 by l square. So, this is force per unit area ok till this point was d ok. Then I have included this term over here which is that term over here it results in this term this I have further broken into a force and what remains. So, this is a force per unit area force per unit. So, this term has force per unit area units ok. Next let us look at this term. So, similarly this will have force per unit area force per unit area. So, the equation is balanced in terms of units. So, let us look at that term. So, we have rho which is mass per unit volume then h is a length then we have acceleration L by T square. So, this is what again m L uh, 
mass per unit volume into length acceleration is length over t square so this is a again m by l t square just like this okay this is also m by l t square which means what it is force over area force per unit area and therefore this force has to be force per unit q3 has to have units of force per unit area so if you're going to apply a force then it should have force per unit area dimensions okay so units is important one thing unit is important okay what is the second thing that is important it should describe the nature of the force describe the nature of the force nature of the force okay so now if let us say I apply a certain uh, you know force I apply a certain force F let us say over let us look at one dimension one dimension. and that is applied over a length okay that force is applied over a length okay such that the total force over this length is the same okay that means what I have a length unit let us say L and I have a force per unit length F by L okay so force per unit length is applied over this particular length so that the total force is F so if the length is made bigger over which it acts let us say this is L1 this is L2 L2 longer length then this is F by L2 which is smaller but the total force remains the same okay so now what do we do what we have is that suppose we want to apply over a very small length small length very very small length okay then what happens is that as my length starts to shorten over a short length I get this much over a shorter length my force per unit length goes up as okay so I will call this epsilon I will call this 1 over epsilon or f over epsilon in the limit what happens is that epsilon will tend towards 0 and then f over epsilon we will become start tending towards infinity so epsilon will tend towards 0 and f over epsilon will tend towards infinity however in the integral which is let us say x star minus epsilon by 2 to x star plus epsilon by 2 dx turns out to be f okay so the function itself if you look at it will blow up however under the integral sign it gives the value f okay 
So, this aspect is represented as f delta of x, where delta x is the Dirac's delta function. It is undefined at x equal to 0, where the argument goes to 0 it is undefined. However, under the integral f delta x dx it turns out to be f okay. on its own if you write f delta of x okay, it is undefined undefined at x equal to 0 where we are looking at interested in. However, if we integrate f delta of x dx okay, from 0 minus to 0 plus that is equal to f. Okay, that means, the integral of delta over 0 minus to 0 plus is 1. Okay. So, now if f times dx integrated is equal to f, then the delta x has units of 1 by length or 1 by x. There is f over here, there is dx over here. So, if f times dx is a unit, but after integral it is still f. Therefore, delta x must have 1 over dx units, okay, 1 over length units. Okay. So, a point force, a point force is described in two dimensions, in two dimensions in this form, the force amplitude delta x minus x star delta y minus y star wherever it is applied. The force is applied at x star and y star, x star comma y star. Okay. So, on the plate the force is applied locally at a point at x star comma y star and it is described in this fashion. Okay. So, now the descriptor is okay. it is describing a point force. What about the units? Well, we said delta x has 1 over length unit. So, this delta x has 1 over length units, this delta y has 1 over length units. So, 1 over length square units, this has force units. So, together they have force per unit area units. So, that is also satisfied. Okay. So, now what I have d del 4 w del x 4 plus twice del 4 w by del x square del y square plus del 4 w by del y 4 plus rho h w double dot and the force now f delta x minus x star delta y minus y star e to the power of j omega t. So, this is my q 3 star, this is q 3 star. Okay. So, if q 3 star is known, now the procedure is very straightforward. What did we say? So, if q 3 star is known, multiply by the mode shape, get f m n star. If f m n star is known, gamma tilde m n is known, 
if gamma tilde i m n is known eta i m n is known ok. So, let us look at q 3 star here ok. So, now what is f? So, we have a simply supported plate ok. So, we are going to look at plate is simply supported. That means my phi m n is sin m pi x by a sin n pi y by b ok. So, given this q 3 star let us find f m n star, f m n star is integral 0 to a integral 0 to b f delta x minus x star delta y minus y star e to the power of we can ignore that e in this form f m n star is just a number uh, sin m pi x by a sin n pi y by b dx dy divided by rho h n m n. Now, what is n m n? n m n is for this simply supported plate it will be the same for all cases integral 0 to a integral 0 to b phi m n square which is sin square m pi x by a sin square n pi y by b dx dy ok. So, that gives me integral 0 to a integral 0 to b 1 minus cos twice m pi x by a by 2 ok and 1 minus cos twice n pi y by b by 2 dx dy ok. So, now they are separate this is an x integral that is a, a y integral and these goes to 0 ok. If you do not believe me you can try it out. So, only one fourth remains. So, integral 0 to a integral 0 to b dx dy by 4 which is a b by 4. So, that is n m n as long as we are in a simply supported plate situation ok. So, now let us look at f m n star. So, this is a delta function now if you are familiar with delta function it has the shifting property ok. So, it is 0 everywhere and undefined over here x equal to x star and it works only on an integral. So, let without elaborating I will get f m n star as f and the value of the function at x star sin m pi x star by a sin n pi y star by b and n m n is a b by 4. So, 4 by a b rho h that is my f m n star ok. Once f m n star is known uh, let me remember that 4 f by a b rho h 4 f by a b rho h f m n star is equal to sin m pi x star by a sin n pi y star by b 
gamma tilde m n now is equal to without writing it so many times f m n star by omega m n square minus omega square okay plus j twice zeta m n omega m n into omega ok that is good enough ok that is good enough. So, uh, now my eta m n is equal to gamma tilde m n e to the power of j omega t and therefore, the response w x comma y comma t is equal to let us see 4 f by a b rho h sin m pi x star by a sin n pi y star by b divided by omega m n square minus omega square plus j 2 zeta m n omega m n omega ok. This is gamma tilde m n into e to the power j omega t that is eta m n now it and summation over m n n eta m n into phi m n. So, sin m pi x by a sin n pi y by b. Okay. So, that is the story. Oh, sorry. Okay. So, this is the response to a point force. Okay. Next. I will just say this here that please take a note um, that there is no m or n standing out, there is no m or n here in the numerator or m or n standing separately out. So, that is for a point force. Okay. We, will, we will comment on that little later. So, the next force we will see is a response of a simply supported plate to a uniform pressure. uniform pressure. Okay. So, what do I mean? I have a plate over here simply supported 
this is x, that is y, this is z, this is the a dimension, this is the b dimension okay. and there is a uniform pressure acting over the plate over some region. Over some square region. Okay. So, now suppose the total force, total force, total force is F. Okay. And then this happens to be from A1 to A2 and B1 to B2. Okay. So, then the pressure, okay, the pressure let us say this this length is A star and this is B star, okay. A2 minus A1 is A star and B2 minus B1 is B star. So, the pressure related is F by A star B star. Okay. So, that is force per unit area. Okay. So, already the area we have matched. Okay. So, if I have the plate equation D del 4 W etcetera plus the mass term is equal to the Q3 x comma y comma t. So, we have f over a star b star units is matched and of course, the harmonic part will be there e to the power j omega t. Now, the spatial extent has to be given. The spatial extent is given by h of x minus a 1 minus h of x minus a 2. So, that describes the x direction multiplied by h of y minus b 1 minus h of y minus b 2. Okay. And the Heaviside function has no units. So, the units are matched here, the spatial description is matched over here. Okay. So, now we have the q 3 descriptor. Okay. So, what is q 3 star? q 3 star is f by a star b star he beside x minus a 1 minus he beside x minus a 2 then h of y minus b 1 minus h y minus b 2. Okay. And therefore, f m n star is equal to f by a star b star rho h n m n integral 0 to a integral 0 to b q 3 star into okay. so h x minus a 1 minus h x minus a 2 into h y minus b 1 minus h y minus b 2 into sin m pi x by a sin n pi y by b dx dy. Okay. So, now what this heaviside function will do is it is 0 outside a 1 to a 2 okay. and therefore, it will allow any 
non zero value only between a 1 and a 2 in the x direction and b 1 and b 2 in the y direction. Therefore, this integral now becomes okay 4 by rho h a b okay into f by a star b star integral a 1 to a 2 integral b 1 to b 2 okay then the heavy side is taken care of sin m pi x by a sin n pi y y b dx dy ok. So, how do we do this? So, we have 4 f by rho h a b a star b star x and y are separate integrals. So, I get minus a by m pi cosine m pi x by a from a 1 to a 2 and again minus b by n pi cosine n pi y by b b 1 to b 2 ok. So, this is what 4 f by rho h a b a star b star a b by m n pi square and cos m pi x sorry m pi a 2 by a minus cos m pi a 1 by a into cos n pi b 2 by b minus cos n pi b 1 by b ok that is your f m n star f m n star from here gamma m n gamma tilde m n gamma tilde m n is f m n star I will not write it the whole thing f m n star divided by omega m n squared minus omega squared plus j 2 zeta m n omega m n omega ok and then from here eta m n and then w x comma y comma t ok. So, that should be simple enough, but was it what is important here is uh, that this has an m and n in the denominator, the mode numbers in the denominator, ok. That means what? If mode numbers become higher, then f m n becomes small, response becomes small, ok. That means what? The pressure prefers lower modes. you apply a pressure in general you will get a high response at lower modes ok. Whereas, if you remember 
this is the response to a point force there is no I deliberately said neither mn is there in the numerator or denominator. So, point force let me write it here prefers all modes equally or affects all modes equally ok whereas it is different with the pressure. Uh, we are run out of time, so I will I will stop the lecture here. We'll continue from here next class. Thanks.